Welcome to the UCM Interface Bible Study dito sa 702 DZAS FEBC Radio TV. Agapay ng sambayanan! Isa itong conversational, expository Bible study program hatid sa inyo ng UCM Interface, ang Young Adults Ministry ng Union Church of Manila. We do our best to study context and let Scripture speak for itself. Ang programang ito ay isang teaching ministry ng Union Church of Manila, a church of many nations committed to making disciples who are transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hello everybody, my name is Gooch, isa akong commercial voice artist. Ako si Rainier, ang Young Adult Ministry Director ng Union Church of Manila. At ako naman si Gunnar, I work for an IT company sa Ortigas. Okay, welcome again. We are back sa ating third episode ng current study natin ng Philippians, the Gospel. What is the gospel? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yun ang word na yun, The word gospel. gospel. What uh, is the gospel? Una, kaya ako gusto tong himay-himay natin kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng salitang gospel. Because I noticed, just in chapter 1, it's a repeated word. Pwede bang bilangin muna natin, just to prove my point, na paulit-ulit siya talaga. <laughs> just chapter 1. Yeah, bilangin lang natin. Kasi una kong nakita ito sa verse 5. Ang sinabi yung partnership in the gospel. Yeah. What does the gospel mean? Isa sa mga popular na narinig ko dyan, yung the first four books of the New Testament. Ayun. And there's a reason why it's called the Gospels. Mm. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But when you share the gospel, when you proclaim the gospel, what does the gospel mean? What's the popular uh, definition? Essentially, pag sinabing gospel, ito yung itong way to be saved. Ah, So uh-huh. it's, that's why it's a good news kasi parang sinasabi mo, you need to tell people how they can be saved. So this ah, is how. The how of getting saved. Okay, pero sige nga, tignan nga natin kung anong ibig sabihin ng gospel based on what the apostles actually preached. What's the content of the gospel message that they preached? Pareho kaya ito dun sa atin, gospel message. Hindi naman natin may exhaust lahat for this episode. Gusto ko ang mangyari sa episode na to, simulan lang nating pag-isipan kung ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng gospel. Alright, so this is not going to be a full orb discussion on the term gospel. Yon yung the gospel to describe the good news about Caesar Augustus. Okay, na, okay. Okay, papasok na siya, hari na siya, at ito yung itsura ng pagkahari niya dito. Maganda na ang buhay natin, maayos na. Ah, okay. Parang may, may ganong angle. Of course, I'm, I'm butchering the quote. He said it in, in a better way. Okay. <laughs> oh, mag- maganda ang English nun kasi British yata si Tom Holland, di ba? Oh, oh. Oh. Anyway, itong salitang ito, Evangelion, is not a Christian or religious term. Kaya tama yung example mo, Gooch. Itong word na gospel, evangelion, ito ay, in short ha, it's a royal proclamation. So, yun nga yung with Caesar na ito na, Caesar reigns. Oh, oh. So, noong first century, kapag narinig nila yung salitang gospel or evangelion, it's a word that's associated with the emperor cult. Okay, okay. Okay? So, it's a secular term. Hindi siya religious term at saka hindi ito inimbento ng mga Christians. Ginagamit na ito noon. So, itong lahat at ito tungkol dun sa emperor. So this is a royal proclamation at itong mga announcements na ito lahat tungkol dun sa emperor. So for example, the birth of an heir to the emperor. That's gospel proclamation in announce. Uy, may anak na si emperor. Yan na yung hahalili sa throne niya. That's gospel. Tapos, when the emperor comes of age, o itong prinsipe na to, he comes of age, that's the gospel. His accession to the throne, at naging emperor na siya, finally. That's also called gospel. Tapos, kasama din yung lumaban sa gera. No, tapos nanalo. Ibabalita ngayon yung mga heralds sa takbuhan yan sa city. Gospel! Ang usually dinig ko sa gospel, yung simpleng translation lang, good news daw eh. But hearing you guys talk about it, it looks, yeah, good news nga, pero as Rainier clarified it, mukhang it's a good news about kingship or about the rulers of the kingdom. So, Ang tanong, consistent ba? Kung ito ang definition ng mga pag narinig nila yung salitang evangelion, pag narinig nila yung salitang good news or gospel, nung panahon ni na Paul, ng mga apostles, when they were preaching the gospel, is it still a royal proclamation? 
ganun pa rin ba? O iba na, uh-huh. di ba? So titingnan natin. Sa akin naman, in preparation for this, I was just doing a search through my uh, ito, from through my Bible app, yung Olive Tree. Siyempre, ang daming lumabas ng gospel, di ba? Pagka sinerge uh-huh. mo yung word na gospel. Eh. Pero just selecting even just one verse per book of the four mm-hmm. gospel accounts, sasabihan natin sa Matthew 4, 23. So this is about Jesus. Uh-huh. So he was teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. And then uh, sa Mark 1, 15, this is Jesus. And saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And then okay. Luke 9, 6. And they departed and went through the villages preaching the gospel. So, pinadala ni Jesus yung mga disciples niya to preach the gospel and healing everywhere. Uh-huh. Uh, strangely though, sa John, walang hindi lumabas yung word na okay. gospel. Although, uh-huh. andyan yung famous John 3, 16, of course, which right, I think everybody right. <laughs> knows John yeah. 3, 16. So, from these, I'm just guessing that whatever Jesus and his disciples were saying here, as in verbally, was probably not how we would say, oh, the gospel is Jesus died for your sin so you can go to heaven. That it should be consistent with how they understood the word Evangelion oh, oh. during their time period. Di ba yung example nung preaching niya sa isang synagogue, di ba? The beginning of his ministry, it's the kingdom of God is here. Are you referring to Luke chapter 4? Nung naandun siya sa synagogue? Is that what you are referring to, Gunnar? Yung he spoke about Isaiah, is that it? Yes. Ah, so yeah. That's Luke oh, oh. chapter 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He opened the scriptures. Oh, oh. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news or gospel to the poor mm. and so on and so forth. So, isa yun sa content na sinasabi ni Jesus, no? So, di ba? Oh, it, and it seems consistent to what I imagine uh, an ancient royal proclamation would be, no? A secular or otherwise. Kasi, uh-huh, he's uh-huh. being anointed, so it, it's like he's, he's being named or given some sort of authority, and as a result of that authority, these are the changes that are going to happen. And ito yung impact nito sa inyo, I mean, the public who are hearing this this news. May benefit siya sa inyo. Right. Okay, mukhang sinunod yung definition ng Evangelion sa pagkakaintindi nila ng time na yon. Marami pang dapat i-unpack din dyan, Gunnar, pero halimbawa yung salitang anointed. What comes to mind is David when he was yeah. chosen as a king oh, yes. or even yung mga successors niya. Hmm, Very big deal one. yung anointing, right. no? Yes, Kailangan yes. in-anoint by a priest sa isang lugar oh. na duly authorized or recognized as right, you know, right. the place where you anoint a king. So yung mga anointed ones sa Old Testament, yan yung people who were given, you know, very specific roles in God's plan. So halimbawa nga, sinabi mo, king, the king has to be anointed. Yeah. Even the prophets were anointed. Priests were also anointed. So ito mga offices na to, may anointing. At dyan galing yung salita na anointed one or the chosen one. Mm. At dito rin, galing yung idea ng Messiah, the chosen one, the anointed one. In fact, iba pa nga yung anointing kay Jesus eh, dahil, you know, he wasn't just anointed with oil. He was anointed during his baptism by the Holy Spirit himself. So, i- iba pa, iba pa talaga. Ah. So, dun pa lang, maliwanag na yung royal framework and how we are to read the life of Jesus. But now, binanggit na kasi itong Gospels eh. Binanggit na nga yung sa Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And lahat ito, they are called the Gospels for a reason. They are gospeling or proclaiming the Messiah. Halimbawa, sa, sabi mo, walang salitang gospel sa John, di ba? Well, just searching the particular word, of course. <laughs> that particular word doesn't seem to be there. Pero, tignan mo pa rin, ano ba yung purpose ni John for writing his gospel? Wait, nasa dulo yun. Oo, eh. chapter 20, 31. But these have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. Okay, so maliwanag, even in the Gospel of John, ang purpose niya is for his readers to know and believe that Jesus is the promised one. He yeah, is the, the anointed one. He is the Christ. He is the, the Messiah. Messiah. Right. A.K.A. The King. Uh-huh. Nabasa na natin kanina, Luke chapter 4. At very clear din sa Gospel ni Luke, na yun din ang mensahe niya, that Jesus is the King. Very quickly, let's go to Luke chapter 23. Yung lingwahe ng 23, lahat yan puro king, kingship. 
although may combination ng mockery, mocking Jesus as king, and also a confession that Jesus is indeed the king. I'll just read from verse 1. Okay. Then the whole body of them got up and brought him before Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding to pay taxes to Caesar, and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Okay. So, clarify so, na oh, oh. Christ, a king. Sa version mo, Christ. Sa version ko, Messiah. And then may, merong, may modifier, a king. Yeah. So, this whole theme in chapter 23 is very, very obvious. In verse 3 pa lang, tinanong, Are you the king of the Jews? And then, he was mocked. In verse 11, he was mocked by the soldiers. Dressed him in an elegant robe. So, ando na naman. Yung royal motif is there. Tapos, ando na naman tung words such as inciting the people to rebellion, verse 13, and then insurrection in verse 19. Kahit bumaba ka pa dun sa verse 35, sabi, let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. Tapos, verse 36, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And then verse 38, there's that inscription, this is the king of the Jews. Tapos, verse 39, ito yung isa dun sa mga criminals who's mocking Jesus. Aren't you the Messiah, save yourself and us, no? So, paulit-ulit yan, yung theme na yan. Meron talagang royal context ito, itong gospel ni Luke. Until may nagsabi talaga. Ito yung isang criminal, and he said in verse 42, Prior to that, he admitted his own misdeeds, his sins. And then he said in verse 42, Jesus, remember me when you come into your, your kingdom. kingdom. Which means he's a king. He acknowledged that Jesus is a king. So, sa Luke, kita yan. Sa John, kita yan. Simulang-simula pa lang sa Mark. Sinabi niya agad ni Mark, This is the beginning of the good news about Jesus, the... The Messiah. The Messiah. The Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, etc., etc. Malinaw. Even in Matthew, grabe yung kingship motif. Tsaka, dun sa synoptic gospels, kaya may genealogy lagi sa simula, I suppose. Yes. Halimbawa nga, I was about to go there, yung genealogy sa Gospel ni Matthew. Well, in Luke also, but in Matthew, nakakatuwa. Kasi hinati niya into three sets of 14 generations. Yung genealogy ni Jesus. Bakit three sets of 14? Ang gusto lang pakita ni Matthew dyan. He wants to just demonstrate to his readers that Jesus descended from the line of David and therefore he is king. Eh, bakit 14? Hindi precision ang goal ni Matthew dito, ah. May mga skip-skip yata, ta, ba? Meron. He was just using the number 14 and three sets of 14. May purpose siya dyan. This is a literary device. This is what you call a um, gematria, yun. Merong <laughs> alphanumeric naman. code. Yung letters ng pangalan isang tao, merong numerical value. In Hebrew, ang gematria ni David, pag kinuha mo lang yung consonants, yung D, yung letter V, and then letter D, ang numerical value niyan ay 14. Ito pa sa Matthew. Halimbawa, dun sa prayer na tinuro ni Jesus sa kanyang disciples. Ano yung petition dun? Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Puntahan niyo yung ending ng gospel ni Matthew. Matthew 28 verse 18. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Oh, pansin niyo yung phraseology and how that is exactly the same phraseology in the prayer. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then in Matthew 28, Jesus said, All authority on heaven and earth. On heaven mm-hmm. and earth. It's the same phraseology. Mm-hmm. Kasi siya na ang king. Sa Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, syempre hindi pa yan exhaustive. Mauubos ang oras kung explain pa natin. <laughs> okay? Yeah. But just to give yeah. our listeners an idea that this is the main idea of the Gospels. They are called the Gospels for a reason. Because the Gospels that they wrote Royal proclamation, yan. They're presenting Jesus as king. Jesus is king. Ngayon, puntahan natin. Ano ba yung message nung apostles, even Paul, when they were gospeling? So this would be sa Acts na. Oh, sample lang to ha. Sa book of Acts. Sige nga. Acts chapter 8 verses 4 to 5. Si Saul persecutes the church and then... Yeah, ah, oh, si this Philip is Philip. Sige, si Philip. Philip. Okay. Therefore, those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. 
Philip went down to the city of Samaria and began proclaiming Christ to them. Proclaiming Christ to them. Proclaiming the Messiah there. Itong preach dito is actually gospeling. They went gospeling about. Okay. <laughs> ano yung ginagospel niya? Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Christ. Mas maganda siguro, mas malinaw kung gamitin natin Jesus the Christ. Alam mong problema, akala nung iba apelido ni Jesus yung Christ eh. Nakakalimutan <laughs> na... Oh, it's an honorific title. Yeah, the Christ. Which means king. Mm-hmm. Binasa natin kanina yung reference sa uh, Luke 23. Pag sinabing Messiah or the Chosen One, that means king. He was proclaiming to them that Jesus is king. He is the Christ. And in particular... I suppose he was explaining why if he's really a king, the question probably in his audience minds is, ba't siya namatay? And so Uh-oh. here is Paul teaching them, yeah, it's necessary for him to die. And he rose from the dead. Alay, ito yung mga content na mahalag eh sa gospel proclamation, lalo na kay Paul. Well, sa lahat naman ng apostles, palaging ganun. Nakompleto nila yung kwento ni Jesus. So, chapter 18, verse 5 naman. Book of Acts pa rin tayo. But when Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul began devoting himself completely to the word, solemnly testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. Oh, pareho pa din. In fact, kahit basahin nyo pa yung unang-unang gospel sermon kay Peter sa Acts chapter 2, first evangelistic sermon, ay patungkol pa rin sa kingship ni Jesus. So, yun ang pinaka-focus nun. Kasi nga, pag sinabi nga nating Christ, King, hindi naman siya parang spiritual affairs lang yung pinag-uusapan. Lalo pa, ang pagkaintindi nila sa salitang Evangelion is a royal proclamation. It pertains to the emperor, to the life of the king. So, eto din yung consistent naman talaga. Eto din yung tinuturo ni na Paul at ng mga apostles that this is all about Jesus the King or the Messiah. So consistent, di ba? Yeah. At si Jesus naman, ang pinoproclaim din niya ay yung kanyang kingdom. Kung babalikan natin yung accounts ng Gospels, nagbigay na tayo ng mga ilang examples kanina. Pero isang halimbawa, balikan lang natin yung Mark, no? Kung mapapansin ninyo, itong Mark chapter 1, verse 1. So sinabi nga niya agad, the Messiah, or meaning the King, the Son of God. Importante itong title na to na Son of God. Kaso masya, I, I think we have uh, assumed that we understand what it actually means. Right away, we think in terms of, oh, Son of God, that's the second person in the Trinity. May background pa to eh. Bakit Jesus is the Son of God? If He is the Messiah, He's the Son of God. Pagpupuntahan mo yung exodus. It is chapter 4, 22 to 23. Sino ba yun? Unang-unang son. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, Israel is my firstborn son. And I say to you, Let my son go, that he may serve me. If you refuse to let him go, behold, I will kill your firstborn son. Who was Yahweh's son? Israel. Israel. It's the nation of Israel. Kaya pagpunta nyo naman sa Hosea chapter 11 verse 1. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. Who was Yahweh's son? Israel. Israel pa rin. Pero ginamit to kay ano, di ba? Kay Jesus din. Yes. That's right. Al- yeah. That was alluded to later. Ginamit yan ng mga gospel writers. You know, out of Egypt I called my son. But now they're referring to Jesus. Why? Because the gospel story is the completion, it's the resolution of the failed story of Israel. Israel was called for a purpose. Israel was not called for its own sake. The light to the nations. Light to the nations. Pero pumalpak sila eh. But here comes the true Son of God, the Anointed One, the Messiah, who will fulfill everything. Kaya nga, tingnan yung ending ng, ano, ng Matthew, ending ng Luke. You will be witnesses to all the nations. Di ba? Matutupad ito dito sa Messiah, sa King. Okay, so, ang gusto ko makita natin dito, like kanina yung binigay kong example kay Matthew, itong Gospel Proclamation, itong Royal Proclamation na ito, tungkol sa buhay ni Jesus ay napaka-rich. Hindi ka pwedeng magsabing, oh, just believe in Jesus. You recite the sinner's prayer and you're good to go. But you don't even know who Jesus is. Hindi mo pala alam na, ah, it's, this is a very rich story. 
The story is the resolution of the failed story of Israel. Kasama ang Old Testament dito. So we can't uh, separate. Hindi Kasi pwede. It's all fulfilling the Old Testament. Oh, oh. Uh, and even Jesus diba? was the one who said it. Diba na? Right. I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it, to bring it to its completion. And also after his resurrection, sa Luke chapter 24, is about Jesus. That's his claim. Yeah. If the gospel is a royal proclamation, at sabi nga natin yung evangelion sa context ng panahon nila ay tungkol dun sa buhay ng king, eh ganun din dapat ang pangunawa natin sa gospel about Jesus. Importante malaman natin yung buong buhay ni Jesus because that is exactly what the gospel means. The evangelion is a royal proclamation. This is about the life of the king. Yan ang pinepresent natin. So when you are going to evangelize, si Jesus dapat ang ipapakilala mo and not reduce him to a mere mechanism. Paano kaya to? Paano nga ba kung ganun ka-truncated yung gospel message natin? Maniwala ka lang sa kanya, say the sinner's prayer, you're good to go. Paano kung ganun lang? Ano kaya magiging impact nun if we don't understand the kingship of Jesus? In other words, anong impact nung forgiveness without kingship? Yung inisip ko, by removing or neglecting yun to teach yung kingship ni Christ, hindi na-emphasize yung response na kailangan from us. The response na kailangan from those who hear the gospel is submission. If he is king, ano implications nun kung king siya? Ayun. Surrender na. Then we are the <laughs> subjects. So if we are the subjects, it means na hindi na tayo masusunod. Si Jesus ang masusunod. So ibig sabihin, may own ideas ka on what is right or wrong in your life and or how things should go. Then that should all go out of the window. Kasi... You there you ha, you now have a king. Okay. Diba yung sinusundan mo? You yes. are now as in Paul's words, a servant. Right. So that's why the benefits are also equally important kasi he's not like any earthly king. Yung kapalit ng submission natin sa kanyang kingship is eternal life right. and all right. the implications of that. I guess dito yung the beautiful picture of how grace fits in na tayo lahat ay mga rebelde kasi tayo eh. And yet no matter yung background natin, no matter how ano yung mga pinaggagawa natin in the past so how bad we think we are, we are welcome to receive this king's pardon. Gantong klase siyang hari na, here, receive forgiveness. Not because of your merit, but because I am king and I am gracious. I forgive all who surrender to me, give allegiance to me. Pero lahat yan, they all flow out of yung pagiging hari ni Jesus. Hari ni Jesus because of his official capacity as a king. Kaya nga nung para dun sa early Christians, kapag sinabi nila at when they proclaim that Jesus is king, yari sila. Kaya sila napapatay eh. Kasi ang allegiance nila, first of all, ay kay Jesus na, not even to the emperor. Exclusive itong loyalty na to, itong allegiance na to kay Jesus. Kaya in a way, tama yung accusation sa kanila eh. In, in, if you look at it in an earthly point of view, yes, they are revolutionaries or rebels because yung allegiance ng puso nila is hindi na sa earth, hindi na sa earthly king. Right. Pero nga, yung, oh. yung kingdom is very different. Sabi nga ni Jesus himself, my kingdom is not of this world. Oh. Yun din. Oh. Yun yung hindi na nagigets. Oh. <laughs> Kasi, di ba, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is for God. Hindi naman ibig sabihin Nun, you are um, removing your loyalty to your wife or to your children. No, hindi yun ang ibig sabihin. Pag inuli ka ng LTO, <laughs> hindi mo na ako saklaw. <laughs> Kay Jesus ako. <laughs> Kay Jesus ako. <laughs> Sir, hindi po ako taga dito. Ibang kingdom diba? po ako. <laughs> <laughs> hindi pwede yun. In regards to yung kingship ni Christ no, sa buhay natin, yung king na kakumpetensya talaga ni Jesus sa buhay ng um, most of us ay yung king me. Mm, yung sarili no. natin no, na independent mga self-determination, yan yung mga binavalue ng mundo natin. I am the eh. captain of my soul. Natin. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. And Jesus is, is breaking that order of things the same way He broke yung ancient order of things, even right now. Kalaban natin ang gospel eh. Lumalaban yan sa nature natin eh. Yeah, yung nature natin. <laughs> Napaka, ano, no? Napaka self-destructive natin, hindi natin nare-realize. Right. But look, the benefit of having Jesus as king is not only the forgiveness of our sins. It's not only the promise that we will live in the age to come. May restoration eh. Ang benefit nitong kingship na to, na message ng gospel, we are restored to be his image bearers. Kasi, para sa akin ha, alam mo kung paano maghari ang, ang Panginoon? Hindi siya authoritarian. He always invites his people to participate in his rule. 
we will also be ruling or reigning with the king. Yan mismo ang tema ng Genesis chapter 1 when God created us in his own image. And also the theme of Revelation at the end. And the theme of Revelation at the end. When we're made in the image of God, we're actually his representatives. We are his stewards, the stewards of his creation. So in the earthly realm, tayo ang kanyang kasama sa trabaho. He wants his people to participate. And so because he's king, he is now able to restore the image of God in us so that we can reign with Him also. And that begins with forgiveness. We have right. to be forgiven. Yes, we have yes. to be restored. We have yeah. to be restored to receive the forgiveness that the King offers. Yes. Okay? So, important. So that's a, a more robust picture. Yeah. At isa pang benefit nitong ganitong pananaw sa gospel, proclamation, the kingship of Jesus, what is the kingdom of God like? What is His rule like? Ano yung sinabi niya sa disciples niya? Di ba sinabi niya that in his kingdom, the first will be last and the last will be first. Mm. That Jesus, the king, came not to be served but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Ganitong klaseng hari siya. Wow. Ganitong klaseng hari siya. Therefore, anong klaseng servant ako dapat? Sino ang model ko? Ako bilang subject, servant, yun din ang susundin ko. Importante to dahil nga, okay, hindi pwedeng transaction lang ang gospel. Like a way out of punishment or hell, escaping hell. But because Jesus is king, I also have to follow his example, his model as the leader. So, how do you now proclaim this message? How do you do that? Paano na to? How can you effectively proclaim this royal message? Um, I, I, I'm sure this is not the complete answer, pero I think one component of that would be living a life na reflects that truth as well. And on the other hand, when you proclaim the gospel to others who don't know Christ. Let's say when we talk about faith, faith in Christ, faith in King Jesus, I would use loyalty. I would use allegiance. Kasi diba yung faith in Greek is pistis. Pistis. Uh-huh. Which is loyalty. So again, yung nga, I, I, I will not contest when people use trust, belief, relationship. That's Pero right. sa akin, personally, I prefer to use loyalty. Kaya nga, mas, mas bagay nga yata yung ano eh. Instead of faith, pwede mo nga gamitin yung word na allegiance or loyalty. Ang ganda nga ng Tagalog word eh. Kasi oh, di ba, pag sinabi natin faith, usually belief, mental. Pero pag tinagalog mo ang faithful, faith, faithful, oh, 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 oh. tapat. Oo, oh, oh. Tapat. Katapatan. Oo, katapatan. Which is Tama. loyalty. Diba? Mm-hmm. Tapat siya. Mm-hmm. Katapatan. Kasi hindi lang siya yung naniniwala ako. Yeah, naniniwala. Oo, yun. Y- hindi, yung... hindi lang ganun eh. That's just one aspect of pistis. But faith could also mean allegiance oh, in scripture. Katapatan. Sige, uh, kung, kung may tanong pala kayo tungkol dito. Probably a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Kasi hindi natin kayang i-discuss lahat. I can recommend some resources. At salamat dun sa nag-email. May nag-email na nga eh. Humihingi ng listahan ng commentaries na ginamit ko dito sa pag-aaral ng letter ni Paul sa Philippians. So if oh, you nice. want to study more about like the word faith or pistis and why it means allegiance and why the gospel is a royal proclamation, I can give you some references of some books that you may want to to read. You can use... Um, ano ba yung ginagamit natin? Well, yung ginagamit natin dito for our podcast is ucminterface at gmail.com. Okay. They can send through ucminterface at gmail.com. Okay, sige. That good. would be okay. so there. sufficient. Okay. So, that ends our discussion on Philippians. A special episode on the gospel. We'll continue our journey through Philippians on the next episode coming up in a few weeks. Pero, inga, for our listeners... You've heard the good news about Jesus, the merciful King who offers pardon to all who give their full allegiance to Him. I guess yung tanong na gusto namin iwan sa inyo is, um, is Jesus your King? Is He really King over your life? Hope to see you in the next episode. Thanks a lot and God bless. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye. You have listened to the UCM Interface Bible Study here at 702 DZAS FEBC Radio TV. Agapay ng sambayanan. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, 702 DZAS FEBC Radio TV, and Facebook account, 702 DZAS FEBC Radio. Hear our full episodes on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, at marami pang iba. Join us at Union Church of Manila, Rada, Corno Legaspi, Makati City.